Hi, it's Kiffin the Bates here, and today's video is a bit about software quality and testing, and I'm also going to probably talk a bit about the Solidity programming language as well. And to start off with, I thought it would be interesting to look at why I think developers have difficulty in constructing decent test plans. And the thing is, it's not actually their fault, it's because the requirements for developing software are different than the requirements for developing a decent test plan. And the analogy here is one of chess. If you're a beginner at chess and you know the rules um, explicitly, but you haven't internalized them, then when you look at a particular chess board, you're going to see thousands of options as to what you could do over the next two, three or four moves. And some of the things you're going to see are going to be invalid moves. And you'll have to consciously think, I'm not allowed to move that piece there. Um, if you become a bit more of an experienced chess player, then you get to the point where when you look at the board, you can't actually see invalid moves anymore. You've internalized the rules of the game and the options that are there for in front of you are vastly limited and in a good way in that now you can only see real moves that you can make and you don't have to spend time thinking what if I move my knight diagonally up here because you're not going to think that and the interesting thing is that chess grandmasters actually take that one level further they have played so much and they have internalized so much of the nature of the game that when a grandmaster looks at a board they can't even see bad moves so their mind filters out options that they have which are legitimate chess moves but which would put them in a very bad position so they have even more filters and as a result they have less choices in front of them but those choices are better and that's what makes them a grandmaster that's why they would wipe the floor with me if we play chess because I'm not particularly good at chess and software developers face the same problem the more experienced they become the more this sort of filter this narrowing of the uh, scope of what they see happens and as a result software developers typically when tasked with walking a user from point a where they are at the moment to point b which is where they want to be <clears throat> will implement that spec and when they write tests and nowadays developers are asked to write a lot more tests than they used to they're going to be thinking in terms of their familiarity with the position that the user is in at A and their familiarity with where B is and the route that they have decided to follow um, in order to get the user from A to B and as a result they are generally speaking in my experience not very good at finding the edge cases the boundary cases the weird things that people can do in order to subvert accidentally or on purpose the system and so Developers are great for producing a test plan that checks that if the user does what is expected, then the program works. What they're not so good at is producing test plans that cover the weird edge cases and the unexpected behavior that users will exhibit because those users are not focused in on the task at hand, which is getting from A to B in the way that the developer is and that's why you need a second pair of eyes preferably a second pair of eyes from someone who has experience in test engineering and this becomes particularly important in solidity because if you're writing a smart contract then you're not just faced with users who don't know what it is that they're doing you're faced with users who are actively trying to find those little alleyways and byways on the route from A to B that will actually take them to C, where C is I've managed to drain your contract of all its funds, or I've managed to steal your NFT, or I've managed to permanently freeze your contract and all the value locked in it is now truly locked in it and can never be unlocked. So that's why testing is of particular importance in smart contracts. And unfortunately, the second thing that I see is that most of the testing of smart contracts even more so than in conventional software projects is done by the developers producing the smart contract itself there's not a huge industry in smart contrast uh, smart contract testing in the way that there is in conventional software projects um, that's partially down to the fact that there's a shortage of resources and if you've got a tester who can actually write smart contract code you're probably going to want to pay him or her to write that smart contract code 
and it's only the fact that a lot of the smart contract developers I've met are really diligent and really passionate about quality that helps us get beyond this unfortunate state of affairs. So uh, there you go, a video on te uh, testing and in particular testing smart contracts. I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you all in the next video soon. Bye for now.